Let me start out by observing that you can't solve these kinds of problems, peace building, peacemaking, creation of peace, and uh, the um, conditions under which peace can be maintained or even created without understanding what the origins of conflict are. And sometimes it has to do with resources, sometimes it has to do with ideology, sometimes it's as simple as you're in charge and I'm not, and I don't like that. That's a tough one, because there's not necessarily a good argument that lets you reverse that view that I should stay in charge, and we see this all the time. So that's one point. Understanding the origins of conflict is essential to figuring out if there's a way to defuse uh, the conflict. The second thing is that we are faced with the politics of poverty versus the politics of plenty. And in my world, trying to create plenty to avoid the politics of poverty to, uh, or the, you know, the, the stress between abundance and scarcity, that's a big deal. Trying to create abundance where it isn't uh, is really important. And finally, uh, I think, Jane, you and I should try in the course of this conversation to help these people understand the difference between safety and security, because we've had a lot of discussion about the difference between those two terms. And, and I thought you articulated it extremely well in your time as Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, recognizing that the title of the organization was almost wrong given what it was you were charged to do. So I'm going to stop there and hand over to my distinguished colleague. So th thanks, Vint. It, it's also a special uh, pleasure for me not only to be at USIP. My doctor father, Alexander George, uh, was a fellow here uh, for several years. Um, and Melanie is, is not only one of the kindest people on earth, one of the smartest people I know, um, has, has been a pioneer. I love your suggestion, Rob. You are chief peace building evangelist. Um, I'm going to stake out uh, what may prove to be some controversial ground on two fronts. Uh, I think we are witnessing the intersection of two very powerful trends that is probably changing the role of government in our lives. Um, and that intersection uh, and that the, because the role of government in our lives will be changing how we approach the prospects for peaceful coexistence, um, that, that there are implications for that. So the two trends, one is a trend of growth and one is a trend of decay. The trend of growth is what I call the, the global cyber awakening, mm -hmm. which is the social consequences of the penetration of the internet. It's not the same thing, it's the social consequences mm -hmm. of the penetration mm -hmm. of the internet. In 1996, 15 or 16 million of us were online. Today, 3 billion. That's yeah, pretty substantial pretty growth. Yeah. Um, you know, the big money is on the O3B, the other 3 billion. Um, it will not take them 20 years to, to get, get online the way it took the first half of the world. We are, all, we are connected to each other and to ideas and to possibilities and to power in ways we were never before. And when I say we, I mean we the people. Um, it's extraordinary, this explosion of awareness of other and of empowerment. We like it and we want more. And it's, and it's just a massively accelerating, powerful trend, uh, and I call it the global cyber awakening. Um, and this for a population in the world that is already healthier, wealthier, more mobile, more educated than it ever before in history, notwithstanding the problems we have. This is enormous individual empowerment on a scale I don't think we have ever seen. And it's smashing into a trend of decay, which is the near total collapse of trust in public sector institutions. And it's global. People everywhere around the world are angry at their institutions. They don't like banks, they don't like business, they don't like the media, they don't like markets. Many of them don't like their governments, and they're angry about it. There's a great deal of anger, whether it's manifest in the Occupy movement, demonstrations in Rio, in Istanbul, anywhere you like around the world. This is broad-based social anger, um, and it's targeting the public institutions of our lives about which and in which we have lost faith. So we have an enormous trend of growth uh, in the global cyber awakening, an enormous trend of decay in the near total collapse of trust in public sector institutions. Um, and I think there's going to be consequences for the role of government in our lives. 